25 years ago, a 35-year-old law professor named Anita Hill testified before an all-male Senate Judiciary Committee claiming that Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas sexually harassed her. For three days, Americans watched the hearings as Anita Hill described the explicit comments she said he made. He got up from the table at which we were working, went over to his desk to get the coat, looked at the can and asked, of what I could have said or done to Anita Hill to lead her to allege that I was interested in her in more than a professional way and that I talked with her about pornographic or X-rated films. With us now from Washington is Nina Totenberg. She is the legal affairs correspondent for NPR and she broke the story 25 years ago. Nina, thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. So I want to ask you right away, the number of sexual harassment claims have doubled after Anita Hill's testimony, which is now more than two decades ago. Mm -hmm. How do you think workplace dynamics have changed or haven't they? Well, I do think it's night and day. Nothing's ever perfect. Uh, we probably will never live in a time when discrimination doesn't exist. But Sexual harassment, though recognized by the Supreme Court by that time as a form of sex discrimination, was simply not talked about in the workplace. There were, by and large, no rules about it. Employers didn't worry about it. And employees, particularly female employees, didn't even talk to each other about it. So what was really fascinating about this whole contretemps was that it was like it ripped open a wound and women started talking about it a lot and it changed the face of the workplace in many many ways well that's i, I think it's interesting what you're talking about because i've heard you in the past describe sexual harassment as a dirty little secret that women didn't want to talk about at that time we've now fast forward 25 years um, how do you think sexual harassment still remains a problem though in the workplace because it still exists look people are people and some people misbehave very seriously. Other people take offense at relatively minor things and it can get straightened out easily. But for any um, uh, fan of Mad Men, it gives you an idea of what it used to be like and what it is no longer like in most places today. I can't guarantee that for everywhere, uh, and I'm sure you can't get guarantee it for everywhere, but we all know that there are places that are where it's still a very difficult subject. I mean, anybody who's read extensively about what was going on at Fox, for example, is, I did not think there was a workplace that was like that anymore. Uh, I read one long article about it and literally went and took a shower. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and I have every reason to believe from people who work for Fox or are on the board of Fox, I have every reason to believe that will change now. But it still does happen from time to time. And, and people have to, it t takes a lot of courage to stand up to it when it is the prevalent um, ethos at the place where you work. I, I like to believe most places aren't, aren't like that anymore. Right. Uh, you know, we've been having this discussion now uh, about sexual harassment, especially now that Donald Trump's comments came out last week. I know it's a much different case than what you dealt with 25 years ago with Anita Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, with this, though, being at the forefront of the national level, do you think that pre-Anita Hill, uh, do you think people would have been so quick to criticize Donald Trump, or is, does this show kind of how far we've come? I actually think it might have been worse. Because people didn't talk about it, a lot of people were unaware of it, and people certainly did not talk that way in public back then. In, I mean, you, there, were, there are certain words in that whole uh, tape that you were on TV, were on the radio, and on most networks, not NPR, because we have a very purist policy about this stuff. But the words were there. They weren't even, many of them weren't bleeped. They were said by anchors. That would not have been true 25 years ago. Uh, the P word that's prevalent there would not have been used on network television 25 years ago. So I think people would have been, if anything, more shocked.
Yeah, I don't know if it would have been used a few years ago. I, I was surprised uh, just in the last week or so. Yeah, I, I, exactly. I, right? So I think people would have, I, you know, our society in some ways has become more vulgarized. So I think people are a little bit inured to this. Not totally inured, thank the Lord. But, but 25 years ago, this was a shocking, shocking way for people to talk. Well, let's go back 25 years ago, because now that I have you here, you were the first person, Nina, to break the story that Clarence Thomas's alleged sexual harassment had happened. This was before Anita Hill's testimony that we saw a little bit earlier in the segment. So I, I want to ask you, why did you start the investigation? How did you find Anita Hill? And really, how did you, agree, how did you get her to agree to interview with you? Well, initially, I just was at, a, at, the, at the final vote in the committee, people were saying things that didn't make sense about personal allegations made about, about uh, then Judge Thomas, and there really hadn't been any. So I got very curious and I started kicking tires and I will go to my grave with the secrets of who helped me. But eventually I got hold of Anita Hill's affidavit to the FBI and I talked to enough people that I knew she had made these allegations and I called her. Initially she said she wouldn't talk to me unless I got the aff affidavit and then I did get the affidavit. But I, she was very hesitant about coming forward and making a public figure of herself back then and I just tried to explain to her that these are serious charges and if you're going to make them there has to be a person making them. You can't make anonymous charges. And so she understood that eventually. And I interviewed her and I found some corroborating witnesses and I did the story. That was a fascinating case and it's interesting. We're still talking about it 25 years later. Nina Totenberg, thank you so much for being with us. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate it.